and decimal, meaning 10-digit system. You may have heard of other systems like binary systems, which is actually what computers use. They speak ze zeros and ones, merely in zeros and ones. So when a computer speaks, it only uses two digits. We call that binary. Some systems actually include a two, zero, one, and two. We call that tertiary. There's actually quaternary. Uh, but I'll tell you what, we operate on a decimal system, and the reason why we do so is because it makes things very, very simplistic. As a matter of fact, what it does is it simply notes in all one big string of digits here how many groups of one you have. Like I have nine groups of one, and then this here we would call the tens. I have eight groups of ten, so what we're technically saying here is I have 80 plus another nine ones, okay? So I have eight groups of ten plus nine groups of one. It's really kind of a neat thing because things just tend to fall into place very, very easily. Um, we do know, need to know, however, how to navigate our way through this, starting with this. We'll call this our, our benchmark or all our, our excuse me, focal point. But we notice that this digit to the left of the decimal, and they don't always write yet decimal, so be careful, but it's always the one spot. I do want to point out one thing. Uh, another name for this synonym is the holes. Okay, so if somebody mentions the nearest whole number or a whole spot, what they're technically mentioning is the one spot. Uh, before we go ahead and navigate our way through this, I do want to point out one more thing, and it's this. Starting here, we'll start over on the right-hand side of the decimal because there's a trend that occurs. But I tell you what, the number one misconception is that people tell me that this is the ones, and guess what this is? It's the ones, and I think that that's totally just weird sounding. Once? No, yeah, I have seven ones. You know, it just doesn't sound right. Uh, what they're on to, though, is the fact that this side of the decimal kind of mirrors this side. It's somewhat symmetrical. If we could fold all these over onto this side, they would match up with their counterparts over onto this side and vice versa. The only difference when we name these things is that everything on the right-hand side of the decimal happens to have this suffix. It ends in the three letters THS, or in some cases singular, it would be just TH. Okay? But everything on this side just ends in S, okay, if it's plural. And doesn't have an S if it's singular, it's just, it is what it says it is, okay? So we start here, we say ones, okay? If this is ones, then this is our other benchmark. We'll call this the tenths. Now, I'm only going to write this word down, tenths, okay? And over here, I'm going to write this word down only. So you're going to have to kind of follow what I say, but this is the tens. Uh. You notice that about this axis of symmetry here, the tenths and the tens kind of match up. So the cool part about this is, if you can memorize one entire side of the decimal, you've already got the other side, just by either tacking on the letters THS or taking them off, okay? Uh, I do want to focus on this side first, but if we have the tenths, the next number is the hundredths, and you're going to notice I say this, this next number is not just the thousandths, we'll say the one thousandths. This is important because if this is the one thousandths, then this is the ten thousands and the next one would be the hundred thousands. You might think that that sounds weird but watch what happens when we introduce, our, introduce ourselves to the left side of the decimal. Of course if this is the tenth, this is the tens. If this was the hundredths, then this is the hundreds. Okay, hundreds. Of course we all know that this is six and it's in the thousands spot but if I were to say this number right here, for just from here to the decimal we'd say 56,789 but this 50 okay, is in a tens spot within this thousands realm. Okay, so we say this is, uh, this five is in the ten thousands spot, this is the hundred thousands. Okay, if we keep going, then we would call this the millions realm, and we say, okay, within this million spot, we have the one millions, ten millions, hundred millions. If we were to continue on in this nature, this fashion, it, it's really a pattern is what it is. So we say ones, tens, hundreds, one thousands, ten hundreds, ten thousands, hundred thousands. One millions, ten millions, hundred millions. Go on to the next one. One billions, ten billions, hundred billions. Go on to the next one. One trillions, ten trillions, hundred trillions. So it's really a pattern here. And as we work our way to the right, it does the same thing. I didn't write this number out very far, and you, you notice I wasn't very creative with it anyways. But if I were to keep going, check it out. It would be like this. Tenths, hundreds, one thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. One millions, ten millions, hundred millions. Okay? One billions, ten billions, hundred billions. So it goes on in the same pattern. Uh, knowing that this is true, interesting thing here is when you get down to number four, it gives you a dollar amount. And of course, we're very familiar with money. Whenever you guys don't understand any, anything that I'm talking about in decimals, I bring up money, and you're like, oh yeah, it makes sense. But tell you what, 
they want you to run this to the nearest cent. Okay. Now, you know what, we've had this discussion before, but yes, it's possible to have a fraction of a penny. You can do this. As a matter of fact, on a very large scale, if, if everybody you know, in the world would give me an extra you know, <clears throat> two-tenths of a penny, that would add up. I would be very pleased with that. As a matter of fact, I can go have a lot of fun with that much money. But <clears throat> I look at this and I say, round to the nearest cent. Now, hey, if it's not ringing a bell right now, I'm going to bring up the word per cent or century, okay, because per cent means for every 100. Uh, century has 100 years, okay? So I look at this, I say cent, cent's a fancy word or 100, okay? So I see the hundredth spot. We're going to go ahead and underline this, and just like the last worksheet you did yesterday, or whenever it is that you did it, okay, we're going to round to this nearest spot, this nearest hundredth, okay, nearest penny. We draw an arrow to the right, we notice this was a two. That's zero to four range, so we're not going to mess with this nine. So when I rewrite this as a dollar amount, we say 43.89. This is approximately $43.89. Now I know I get on your case about if we round everything to the right of the digit in focus, here that we're focusing on must become a zero. But you know what? We can keep it like this because we are talking about money, but if we weren't, you know, or even if we are, this still would make sense because that zero does nothing but hold this spot, okay? It doesn't represent any value whatsoever, okay? So what we're looking for here is just for you to round these numbers, okay? Now working our way down uh, numbers eight through the rest of the page, you know what? Everybody misses these problems, and you know what? They, it's because they try and make it harder than it really is. I'm going to show you a method. This is the method that I use to put numbers in order. Two things you want to keep in mind. Two, okay? Two things you want to keep in mind. Uh, number one, as you're going through these, okay, do not get fooled by the length of the number. The fact that one number has five million digits in it and another number has one digit has nothing to do with the fact that one is greater than or less than the other. Of course, we know greater than or less than on a number line means which one's furthest to the right, which one's furthest to the left. You know what? That's not very helpful in this situation because these are not integers, okay? They are severe decimals, and they're all very, very proximal to each other. That means very, very close to each other, okay? And then the other thing you want to keep in mind is this because I want you to pass your DMCT and I want you to start following directions because I'm horrible with directions. But a lot of people have an urge to put these in order from greatest to smallest to smallest to greatest, whatever they decide to do. Either way, you put them in order. It demonstrates this knowledge. However, if somebody says, please and thank you, put these in order from smallest to biggest, you had better do that. The people that put it in order from biggest to smallest didn't follow the instructions. They're not going to get credit for this problem. Okay, so in this instance, I, I believe that we're going from smallest to biggest. Okay, what I want to do is, and, and you know, I'm, I've got a green here and we marked in brown, but it'll help you see this a little bit better. You're going to start in the leftmost place value. I notice that all of these, though, start in the ones spot. Okay, the one spot. So I look at this, I say, look at all these ones. Okay, this has a six, this has a six, this has a six, this has a six. This might sound stupid, but I say, which one is the least? Well, there's a tie. In the case that there is a tie, what we do is we move on and we proceed to the right to the next place value, which after the ones, remember, is not the ones, but it is the tenth spot. So moving on, I notice this has a three and this has a three. So, so far there's a tie. Hopefully there's something smaller than a three. This has a nine. This is totally out of the question. This last one, though, you notice has a zero. You've got to be kidding me. Nothing gets smaller than a zero unless you go negative. And then, you know, when we write numbers with decimals, you don't write negative digits. So, tell you what, this one happens to be the smallest decimal. So I am going to list that one first. That was 6.0999. And this is important. Watch what I do now. Now, this is a pretty nice problem in the sense that there are only four decimals to begin with. But some people might give you like 10 to 20, even 30 to 50 decimals at one point if you're doing data and statistics to put in order. And you know what helps you out a lot is to just do this. When you've already relisted it, cross it off. Now I know that that's out of the running. It doesn't get in the way of my, my vision, my, my view of this field of numbers anymore. And I know that these are the only three left. Now, I go back here and I say, well, remember, these had threes. This one had a nine. I can already tell you that this is going to be the largest out of all the decimals. So we need to keep comparing these, and since there was a tie, we need to proceed to the hundredths spot. The hundredths. I look at the hundredths. They each have two hundredths. So still, there's a tie. I'm going to go over to the thousandths, the one thousandth. This has a nine. This has an eight. Clearly now we see that this one is one one thousandth smaller than this one in terms of the thousandth spot. I'm not calling that the difference between the two numbers, but this thousandth is one less 
of the thousand than this one. So this would be the next number, 6.3289. Cross it off. 